Hey everybody, Brian from Cabinet Joint. Uh, we're talking about the assembly of this monstrosity behind me, a wall open bookshelf, W-O-B-S cabinet. Uh, these come in a couple different varieties, uh, either single opening or a double version where there's an upright fixed divider. Um, these particular wall open bookshelves are available for either kitchens or even other rooms like home offices and so forth. And come in a range of sizes all the way up to 72 inches. This one opening goes out to 36 wide. If you want to go with a double opening, we'll have an assembly video for that one separately. That one will go out to 72 wide. So you can get these pretty large. They're, they're very large cabinets. They're going to come with matching interior standard as long as you're doing a paint, um, one of the standard four wood species of cherry maple, uh, hard maple, soft maple, or red oak. Um, if you're doing a, an odd species like quarter sawn oak or walnut, it, you cannot get the matching interior, so bear that in mind. Because these cabinets come with um, matching interior as standard, the shelves are, there's no solid wood shelf option. So if you're aware of our line, we do have an option for a three quarter thick bull nose solid wood shelf. Because these are matching interior, the shelves are always gonna be veneer with the stain or paint, depending on what you did, uh, stain or paint with an edge band on the front. And there's no other option for that. So bear that in mind. If you ordered the solid wood shelf option and you get these as veneer shelves, that's not a mistake. Um, cabinets come in a range of size depths uh, from five and a half inches up to, I believe, 27. So you can get these very deep. They're meant to sit on the counter. You'll see this little strip here is really just to keep these legs from spreading. You'll pop that off and it will sit on the counter. Um, there's no bottom to it, so be aware of that. And again, you can use them for any number of things. And even with a custom front frame, we can put fixed floors in here and do a smaller opening at the bottom. There's all sorts of flexibility with these units. Now, the one behind me, it's first of all, it's in a custom color called uh, Rock, Rockwood Shutter Green. It's a, it's a custom prism color, but it's also got a wide extended style. The normal cabinet, you'd have inch and a half, inch and a half. This one's got a wide extended style. A quick note, when you're building this, uh, you'll see us, I think, in the assembly, putting some clamps on the cabinets. Be careful when you clamp this because you can easily crack it if you torque this, this frame backwards. So be careful when you're clamping. Big cabinets like this, um, you do want to throw some clamps on there to hold the front frame tight to the box while things set up. So anyway, very powerful cabinet in your design repertoire. Uh, we use them all the time. Open shelves are really picking up steam. People are tired of opening doors. They like to display their, their wares. Uh, we even do a lot of like floating shelves anymore. So um, just a really good cabinet to have in your arsenal, both for home office and for kitchens. So let's get to the assembly and show you how this thing goes together. Okay, everybody, let's get started building our massive wall open bookshelf. Um, before I get started on the assembly, let's talk about tools. Uh, as usual, you have a Bostitch, can be other brands, Hitachi, whatever, but a stapler that shoots between an inch to an inch and a quarter staple. We like an inch to an inch and an eighth. If you can find them, inch and a quarter gets a little long, but it's still workable. Um, all you're trying to do is tack the parts together till the glue sets up. We also like a dead blow. This is a 26 ounce, got sand in it. Um, kind of acts as a little, you don't have to hit it so hard because the momentum does it for you. But you can get the little rubber headed wooden mallet for four or five bucks at Lowe's, that'll work fine too. Uh, tight bond too, we like for our wood glue. Uh, would not recommend Gorilla or any kind of foaming glues that smear out onto your work surfaces and are difficult to wipe up. Uh, this, if it gets on your work surface, it wipes up with water very easily. Uh, pencil, because we will, we will be making some marks for scribe lines, so I'll put that in my hat. Um, we have a wet rag to wipe our surfaces down to get excess glue off, especially a cabinet like this where you're going to see matching interiors. You don't want the wood glue getting on your painted surfaces and looking like a smeary mess. You want to wipe that off while the glue is not yet set up. And then for this particular cabinet, different than most other assemblies we show, I have a pair of pliers. You're probably thinking, what's that for? On this frame, there's a brace at the bottom to keep the legs of the frame from flexing and breaking. So we leave that on during the assembly and then even during the assembly, I'm sorry, the installation, right up until installation, delivery, everything, we leave that on to kind of keep those legs of the cabinet stiff. Uh, stiff. You want to pop that off and when you do, there's going to be some staples running into the bottom of the frame. If you're not mindful to pull them out with your pliers and you set it on a finished countertop or on your finished floor in your house, those staples can scratch. So you want to pop that off with a hammer or whatever, just knock it off and any staples that are there, pry them out with this without marring your finished surface. I will not be taking that spreader off now, so I'm just going to set my pliers off to the side. Uh, set my dead blow over there too. And now we start in with our normal um, age old glue up the front frame process. We have two shoulders on the front frame. Uh, one here, one here, and then a deep trench where your splines go. You want to glue the two shoulders 
um, you know, good bead of glue on both sides and then one up top where your cabinet panel is going to contact. You want to keep it on the outside unfinished surface so that you don't have any glue smeared to the inside. Now, as we always say in our videos, too much glue is not necessarily good, so keep the beads of glue fairly consistent and not terribly heavy uh, so you don't have glue sque squeezing out everywhere. And you can see I'm doing that top shoulder, not the interfacing shoulder. See if my long arms can get over there with the glue bottle. <clears throat> ah, yes, it's good to be tall. All right, set that off. First thing we do is grab a cabinet side and there's gonna be a distinct left and a right because I've got my cabinet top dado, no cabinet bottom dado. So this is gonna be my side facing you guys. And you know what, just to make things easy, I'm gonna do the one that you can actually see first. So I have my splines facing down, finished interior facing in, got my dovetail at the top where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna line up with my finger at the bottom of the frame, not, the, not including the little, the little brace. And we're just gonna press that side in. It'll, it'll freestand, those splines will hold it up. Gonna do the same thing with this one. You might see me step off camera a little here. Same thing with this one. Gonna line it up at the top of my frame in this case because of where I'm standing. <clears throat> okay, we're just gonna check and make sure we're seated everywhere and you can tell by looking if the bottom of this panel is touching the front frame all the way around. So now, grab my glue bottle again. And this time we're gonna run a glue, bead of glue halfway up the dovetail for the cabinet top, halfway. If you go all the way down, that glue is gonna pile up at the bottom when you slide the top panel in. So I've got my top panel again, I want splines down, finished surface in. Make sure you got your panel oriented correctly. Line up your dovetail. And then just light, gentle taps. Sometimes the painted surfaces, because Conestoga paints the entire thing, including the dovetail, these go down a little stiffer than your average cabinet top. And that's okay, tight fits good, it's not gonna come out but you might have to finesse it a little more. And this is where your dead blow can come in handy. I'm only doing this for demonstration because I'm already tight at the bottom, but you can just kind of give this all some swats to make sure everything's seated. I feel like uh, the character from Elf doing his little tapping on his Christmas toys in the movie Elf. All right, uh, now we're gonna grab our glue bottle and we're gonna glue for our cabinet back. And what we're gonna do is keep the glue bottle flat Instead of like this, we want it flat so the fat edge of the glue is going against the cabinet side. We don't want to glue the bottom of the rabbit because if we glue the bottom of the rabbit, our cabinet back is finished and it's going to be glue on finished surfaces which doesn't stick well. We want the half inch thick plywood side or edge to go against this unfinished, it doesn't have top coat on it, it's just got some stain or paint over spray so that glue will still stick really well. So we glue our cabinet sides, and then we glue across the cabinet top. And now, see how I can do this by myself. <clears throat> We're going to take our cabinet top and line up the, da the dado, slide it into place. So now, I'm gonna make sure my, everything lines up, and I'm gonna sink. I'm just using the mallet to sink the top of that cabinet top into the dado. And once it is, I'm gonna grab my Nailer, what, it, what happens on the bottom sometimes is this back will fall inside because there's no, these sides are just kind of flopping. So I'm gonna put one pin to hold my cabinet side in so I don't have any messes or accidents happen here. I'm just putting a pin right into that cabinet back. Now I can grab, grab my pencil. I'm gonna put the tip of the pencil 
right on the middle of that panel, and I'm just gonna strike a scribe line using my finger as a guide. I'll come to this side and show you. So I just use my finger as a guide there. Find the middle of that cabinet side. And now you can use that pencil line as your nailer line. So I'm gonna go ahead and work across here and every three inches, I'm just gonna nail into that pencil line and that's stapling my cabinet side or back to my side. I like to keep some pressure here so I don't have any gaps inside. Okay, I'm gonna go off camera, do the other side and then show you how to do the top scribe line. Okay, I've got both my cabinet sides tacked to my cabinet back. Remember, if you have a finished side, um, like say this side was a, a finished painted, you can't tack through the finished surface, so you're gonna to wanna to take the butt of your gun and run it right up in there, to make sure it's tilted, don't do it straight. You wanna make sure it's toenail and, and just go this way. Either someone can press or you can use a clamp or just make sure your hand is pulling. You want no gap between your cabinet back and your cabinet side. And just go along every three or four inches this way. By toenailing it that way, it goes into the cabinet side. It doesn't blast through the inside of the cabinet. But we don't have finished sides on either side, so I was able to come through both directions. Now, I've only got a top to tack in. There's no bottom on this cabinet, but um, circa 2023 in May, Conestoga changed the way they do the scribe lines. It used to be a line like this, but um, all the newer boxes are coming in with holes. So instead of having a scribe line that might be wavy, uh, they actually have a hole in the center and then every five inches working outward. And what you're gonna do is put a staple on either side of those holes. So I'm gonna follow the scribe line that they have on this old style cabinet, but the new ones are all going to be um, holes. So line up. Okay, so now our top is on. We can flip this cabinet up and show you the finished product. We're gonna do some wiping out of glue. Jeffrey, you wanna help me with that? And we may do some clamping as well. On big boxes like this, you sometimes get a potato chipped kind of uh, um, cabinet side or front frame, and you wanna make sure these are on there real good. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to put some clamps on. Let's turn this so the audience can see it. And, Using clamps much like this, we'll just work our way along and we're not gonna do all this for the camera, but using clamps like this, um, make sure you have padded teeth on these things. We can go ahead and clamp these frames on to make sure they're good and tight. So um, that kind of concludes the assembly. We'll do all that off camera. We've got some glue to wipe out. I can see some glue squeezing in here. So we'll get our rag and wipe that out, get this nice and tight, and there you go. There's a wall open bookshelf for you. Pretty, pretty easy cabinet to assemble. This one fought us a little bit because of the size of it, but a lot of times these are just shorter, smaller cabinets. They're really easy to put together because there's no cabinet floor. There's generally no doors on them, so they're much easier to work with. But uh, hope this helps. Give your cabinet coach a call if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.